sentences very clearly. So, <laughs> my, uh, what exactly is in that coffee? No, no, no. no. It's, I've been up since 4 a.m. and didn't go to bed till midnight and I'm tired. So, next week I'll do another wheel demo and then do a glaze demo afterwards. Um, so, we can get that down. Back to this. If we have class next week. If we have class week next week, yeah, I gotta find that out. Don't we forget to ask Mary what the deal is with that. Usually, if you miss one, right? We missed last week, but next, next week, week is, is Halloween. Uh, uh, show you how much you <laughs> He happens to have two little ones too. What's that? He happens to have two little ones. No. In the past, I've had a, a grad student come a cover class for me. Um, yeah, if uh, I might have him come back next week, if they're not going to cancel, and is uh, probably the same guy because he's he's so damn good at throwing pots. It's those of you that met him last time will be shocked to see how he's changed. Really? This is scary. That's it? That's all you're going to get? This? That's all I can tell you. He's gotten hairier. <laughs> Because I'm going to throw a bottle here, I'm, I know that it's going to be a narrow bottle and so I'll center sort of narrower, narrower than I would if I were making a bowl, obviously. Here. So, drop the well this way as far as I can and then I switch to the back side here to go the rest of the way. Because I can't quite reach, and I well to reach all the way down, I have to I have to take my elbows up, and that's you're gonna go out of you're gonna go out of center there. So switching to the other side, I can still remain braced and finish the finish the bowl. 
finish the well. Now, I'm going to open this up a little wider than I know that I'm going to want to, um, or another way to say it would be, it's good. I've opened it wider than that base will end up being. Um, but that's going to help me get the clay up off the, the bottom of the form. Having to come back in on it um, forces you to deal with the clay in a different way, and so it's easier to get that stuff that's always stuck on the bottom up. <clears throat> now, is the clay going to be softer because you played with it for so long and centered and put more water? A bit, it? yeah. It's going to be a little more responsive, a, a little more lively. Yeah. Um, Sorry? The thickness? Uh, I'm not going to trim, so I'm, you know, maybe a quarter inch, three, you know, less than three eighths for sure. So I've opened the well, and so now I'm going to go back to my centering position, and with that bottom part of my hand here, kind of right by the pad, I'm going to kind of stick that. Um, Part of my palm into the clay a little bit and then start to climb and that'll help me uh, sort of distribute the clay out so it's the walls start a little more even to begin with so and you're intentionally the, doing the country yes it's gonna sort of naturally pull up and So from here, I'm going to throw with my knuckle to start with because my fingers aren't quite strong enough to, to deal with the thickness that's there. I really want to shrink this diameter down about at least half as much as it is. Uh, and so the knuckle is going to really work. Now, don't try to just push with your arm. It's really important that you push with your leg stay braced on your leg. And the position is, my inside hand is real vertical and my, my outside hand here is, the knuckle is kind of right up into it, real vertical, but the, I've also got my thumb sort of sticking out into the back and that's just bracing the clay as it comes around because there's a lot of a lot of torque going on. You know, I, I'm, I'll move quickly. When I feel it start to drag, I'll kind of skip to the next spot and and pick up some moisture. Or, you know, like instead of instead of you know having my hand maybe opened up like this, I'll, I'll turn it up a little higher and that'll push some water down into it. Um, the other way to say it is, I'm not really sure. <laughs> Years of practice. There's so much. There's so much going on um, that it's really hard to know sometimes. You know, I, I feel like I've gotten better at sort of the fundamentals of what I'm doing and describing that. Um, but the intricacies, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot that I've still yet to really explore what exactly is happening. So now I'll switch to fingertips because there's uh, less.
less clay to deal with. So I think the key to a lot of this is as you're throwing, just keeping your body in check, you know, it's just side, pushing the clay up to it from the inside. I know I've said this before, but I'll just reiterate it. It's it it smooths the surface, but it also sort of aligns the clay and makes it more plastic and more accepting to being manipulated. Now you got it really wet before you did that. Is that part of it? Or was that just you um, had to Well, I, was, to I hadn't it? decided that I wasn't going to make another throw. Yeah. Alright. Yep. And so what I'm doing now is just sort of teasing it into the form that I want. And I'm definitely, because I know I've got extra clay out here on the bottom, I'm making sure to keep it on the outside of the pot. Or I'm making sure to address the form from the inside, right? Um, so trying to make that inside of the form perfect. So in the end, I can match the outside to that, um, which is going to give me the best weight So with this form, I'm trying to put the I'm trying to put the widest part of the form or the belly of the form near the middle. Because I really want it to sort of come out and then come back in and sort of end this at the, nearly the same diameter as the bottom and the top. I'm starting to get an idea of why I'm not doing my glaze demo tonight. I'm not even sure what I'm saying. You normally are doing that. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> So, I've, I've basically got the pot, on the inside anyway, finished from maybe midpoint down. So now I'll start to work on the top portion. Make sure I get that. Are you pressing in from the outside? Or? Uh, no, I was just kind of guiding, feeling. What are you doing? I'm, I'm pushing out from the inside, trying to get that trying to get that belly just right in the transfer um, from the belly to the yeah from right I want to get that thing. for this form it really it's after you get it closed up there's really no going back unless you want to sort of start over and these forms take long enough the way it is so yeah come on Jim. And then I'll go down below the, the belly a lot of times to control it because just the act of collaring pushes down on everything and so that belly will grow. Go back and make sure that, yeah, you're not giving it too much sugar. Weight loss. Yeah. My belly's been growing. And then 
as you all know, as you collar, the clay gets thicker again because you're forcing it in on itself. Um, and so when I when I go to rethrow now to thin it back down, I won't go back to my traditional throwing technique because it, it I don't want to leave those throw lines in there anymore because I already smoothed the surface down a lot. And so instead, I'll throw with my thumb in a vertical position like this, um, and the position is kind of like it's kind of like that, pushing the clay out above my thumb just a little bit. And it's a little more um, delicate. You can uh, control your movements easier, I think. <laughs> I'm just looking for the least crusty spot. <laughs> I also have to remember that the form down here is thicker than it should be. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm not happy with the way it looks yet. So neck portion I'll do a backwards bend on the rib and I'll start up high and kind of let the bottom of the rib drop down as I move my way down. I'm not sure how to describe it better than that. You see that? There it goes. And then for these I've been uh, line there because when I when I warp this out that that line is gonna kinda sag a little bit and make it a different also, shape. It can also delineate a blaze line. Right. Yep. And it can give you an opportunity to change what you're doing with blazes. Sorry. Did 
you get the water out before you closed it up from the bottom? Yes. Okay. <laughs> no, I just missed it. I just... That's what I was going to reach for. Okay, so top portion is done now. Now it's about getting that bottom shaped the way that the inside is meant for it to be. Um, and so wet trimming is how I do that. And so I know that right about there is where it starts to get thick again. And that's where the, sh that's where the shape starts to fail me. Um, and it's this, it's this area here that I know is not what it should be. And I know that base needs to be much narrower. So. And wet trimming, even though it's this wet and this heavy, it's going to it's going to. As long it. as I'm done with the top, I can deal with. The, I can take the the holding clay off the bottom without it collapsing, or at least hopefully it doesn't collapse. And I don't trim down as much as I might if it were leather hard. You know, I mean, I definitely leave a little more clay there than. But again, you know, like this being a vase, I kind of want it to be a little bottom heavy. Um, that's all right. It's not something that gets picked up and used um, manually. And so this wet trimming, as soon as that first ribbon of clay starts peeling off, it'll it'll break off and fall away. Um, once it falls away, you have to stop. Or you'll trim over that piece of clay and you create a little bump. So don't be in a hurry. Now that bottom portion is, you can see how that form is much more pleasing now. It's definitely what the inside looks like. You can always work from the top down? Uh, not always, no. But it seems, uh, in this case, to be better. I make some other models that 
have a, a, a flare at the foot, so it, it kind of comes in and then back out again. And on those, I'll, I'll start at the bottom and trim my way up. But it has to do with the form. So essentially, you're, you're sort of always cutting inward. If you mm -hmm. And I'm watching that profile as I'm going um, and trying to keep that picture in my mind of what right. the inside sure. looks like. Sure. And then occasionally I'll stop and push. And it feels like it's still pretty stiff. So I could probably go a little bit more. Well, that'll be the, the little bit that wrecks it, right? <laughs> kind of like that last throw. Shouldn't have mm. done it. I think that's cool stuff. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way the form looks, so. Uh, so now, from here, I'm going to put my little foot on right now. Okay, I know that that looks easy, but I keep messing it up. How do you do that without getting a crack in the middle? Uh, the part? Yeah, you have to, here I'll show you. Um, so you're getting like little tears, and mm -hmm. yeah. What you need to do is, what you, what you didn't see me do exactly, there's a little sleight of hand, was I got the rib wet, but then I went quickly to the bat, and that excess moisture got just deposited on the bat. And then what I do is angle the, the rib so that water pushes up, and the water allows me to, to get a nice finish on there without it without a tearing. Now, when you do that, you have to make sure that you go back with your sponge and soak that water out of there because you'll drag it underneath when you cut it off um, and then you won't be able to pick the thing up off the wheel. I'm getting ahead of myself. So, there's just a Tiny bit of clay there. Get rid of. Okay, so now for the part. Flatten this thing out. Hopefully, it works out for me. So you leave the bottom, bottom attached when you do this. Yep, I haven't cut it. I haven't cut it free yet. But the, this is just uh, foam that I grabbed from the, from the glazing room in there. Um, the foam that they pack the cones in with the, the fire in the kilns with. But this will allow me to touch the pot without touching the pot. And so starting at the bottom. looking straight down at it. You want to have this happen as evenly as possible. finish with my hands. First I'm going to do these, remove the foam out to the edge a little bit and just squeeze that edge out a little further. And it's that part, squeezing that edge out, that gives it a more dynamic feel. Fix 
top just a little bit. And then with clean, dry hands, just go back. I don't think there's much. Usually I have to mess with it to get it where I like it, but this is actually looking pretty good. Um, so, Dick Lehman makes these forms, and I've forever been trying to make them, and it's just eluded me, but I thought, I had it in my mind that you had to reach down inside with a stick and push those sides out from the inside. And uh, finally, last weekend at lunch, I think you were there. And we, yeah. I said, Dick, how the hell do you do that? <laughs> and he said, Well, I just flatten it out with my hands. <laughs> I said, You don't push it from the inside? No. Okay. So I've gone back to my studio and been playing with it. Part of the reason I'm doing this for you today is that I finally figured it out. Um, <laughs> and it's, it really is about pushing those sides out and getting that edge a little thinner. Um, because if you just push up the middle, that, that side stays quite wide. And it, um, it's never been what I had in mind um, for what I wanted. Um, and then just do it. I've been totally addicted to slip lately. <laughs> I'm sure there's a total set for you. And so, why the reason I'm doing this is not to have you watch me mess with slip, um, but because that flattened surface gives you such an opportunity that that big canvas there is so tempting. How do you resist <laughs> doing something? You know, like and I, and I don't do intricate carving and. Combing. Yeah, you know, I don't, it, you could take your finger. Yeah, leather hard, you could, there's, I mean, you could do all kinds of stuff. Um, I've been really interested in these sort of expressionist marks lately, and so that's, that's what I've been sort of concentrating on. Um, and then just take my footer tool again. <laughs> so, that's, uh, that's tonight's demo. That is a lovely demo. Very lovely. Clay mustache. Yes, it's great. <laughs> 